Pete Lackey for the Bible Minute. Hey everyone, well we finished the Gospel of John. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in because I want to focus on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So let's begin. Chapter 20, verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, that's John, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. Now that's funny. So for all eternity, uh, forever in the Bible, the Apostle John made sure in his gospel that the world knows that he was faster than Peter and beat him to the tomb. Bible humor. I think it's funny. So let's begin on verse 5. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw strips of linen lying there, and, and as well as the barrel cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself and separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who reached the term first, tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Verse 10. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated there, where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They had taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I'll get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around and cried in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not returned to the father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them. I'm returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Now, this is powerful narrative here. What's interesting about this <clears throat> is that with this resurrection, the most important uh, part of Christianity, there would be no Christianity without the resurrection. This is the pinnacle. One of the signs of authenticity is the fact that the disciples in all Gospels report that women find Jesus first. Jesus Christ appeared in bodily form to women first. Now, if you were to make up a story, you certainly would not have women be the ones who Jesus first appeared if he's the resurrected Messiah. It makes no sense to make up a story like that. In fact, a woman's testimony was not even valid in a court of law in the first century. Many first century rabbis taught, quote, that it is better to burn the law than to teach it to a woman. So there's some fascinating authenticity in this story. Secondly, why wouldn't the disciples just make up a story that was unfalsifiable if they were going to kind of come up with something that Jesus rose to the dead? For example, say something like Jesus wrote spiritually. That's something that you can't falsify, you can't prove or disprove. No, they recorded Jesus rose from the dead bodily. That body that went into the tomb is the same body that rose the third day where we have Easter. Now, I'm going to talk a lot about each of those <clears throat> throughout this series as we get into the Gospels. But I want to report to you that there's four historical facts, four of them, that are accepted by all New Testament scholars. The empty tomb, the fact that there was a burial of Jesus, there's actually no competing burial narrative uh, throughout history, the fact that Jesus died on the cross, and there's post-mortem appearances, that there's reports of Christ appearing resurrected form from the dead to people. Now that is a powerful uh, testimony and witness to the resurrection of Christ. If you want a lot more details on that, I'm going to put below... Uh, in the comments, uh, an hour-long q and A I did on a class uh, on uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's an hour long. I took questions from Facebook and Twitter and throughout as I was taking people through Christianity 101 uh, when I was teaching at a church. I think you really enjoy it. I dig into a lot of these things and take questions. Again, this is a powerful story and there's evidence from history that Jesus actually rose from the dead. In fact, I'm going to give you a little nugget here. 
Once doubting Sir Lionel LeCou, you can find him in the Guinness Book of World Records. He is identified as the most successful attorney in the world. That's a pretty good uh, credentials. He said this, quote, I say unequivocally that the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ is so overwhelming that it compels acceptance by proof, which leaves absolutely no room for doubt. This is Pete Lackey for the Bible Minute.